This is Decent Sampler. A lot of people have been talking about it recently, probably because it's free and that's always a good thing. In this video, I want to figure out if it's the best thing you can get for the money or lack thereof and how it compares with other samplers out there. I'm also going to be making a sample library using my tube amp so I can get a developer's point of view. So here's what's so cool about this sampler and why everyone is using it. Not only is the sampler itself free, there's a website which you probably already know about called Piano Book. Here you can download hundreds of free sample instruments made by a community of many musicians from all over the world. And a lot of them sound really good. Let's go to this ensembler. These people are way too creative. Like they're using vacuums and like kitchen utensils to make sample instruments. Like that's boiling water. Like what the f hey! dude, that's insane. You download the instrument and you can literally take the zip file drag it to Decent Sampler, and there it is. I'm playing that guy's boiling water. Now I'm playing somebody's kalimba. By using Decent Sampler, you can have access to some truly unique sounds, but it's still not widely used by big companies selling sample libraries, and that's a problem. So the industry standard for sharing sample libraries is still contact. You probably know that already. The problem is that it's freaking $400 just to be able to open other products. Now I know that you can also use it to sample stuff by yourself. That's the main selling point. It's super powerful. But there are still lots of instruments that still require the full version of contact. You can buy a $2,000 sample library and then guess what? It requires contact. I actually struggled a little bit to find a Spitfire product that required contact. Companies such as Spitfire Audio are doing a great job putting out products that come with their own plugin or that only require contact player, which is free. So as a paying customer of Spitfire Audio myself, thank you so much for that. Now I'm gonna record the samples. The idea is to make a pad for like ambient music, but using the feedback of an electric guitar. If you don't know what that is, you're in for a treat. <laughs> I have no clue if this is gonna work, but we'll find out. My amp has some issues right now. I'm gonna try different notes so I can get different harmonics. Oh. Listen! Don't forget hearing protection kits. Oh, that's nasty. Oh. That's loud. <laughs> That's enough. <laughs> now I'm going to take the samples and actually create the instrument. So I know what you're thinking, um, Adrian, that's a notepad. And you're right, currently Decent Sampler doesn't have a visual interface to map the samples to the MIDI keyboard. So you literally have to write this stuff on a notepad to create a Decent Sampler file. That is probably the biggest downside to Decent Sampler. I know this thing can look very intimidating, but it's not that complicated. The creator of Decent Sampler, David Hillowitz, is it David Hillowitz? Am I butchering your name? I'm sorry, dude. Hi, I'm Dave Hillowitz. Yeah, Hillowitz. <laughs> so the creator of Decent Sampler has a very detailed tutorial on YouTube on how to create instruments for Decent Sampler. And he has very good documentation on how to create an instrument. 
I'm just gonna copy this. This is like the base for the instrument. You can paste that. I know nothing about coding or I don't even know if this is something that you would call coding. I've never programmed anything in my life. So I'm gonna save this file as guitar pad and then I'm gonna change the name to DS preset. And now you have a decent sound for instrument. We're gonna open it as a text file again and now we can start adding our samples. The concept of sharing sample libraries that anyone can open with a free sampler is not new. The most famous free format out there is SFZ. There are a bunch of players that can open SFZ files and a lot of them are free. However, they all work and look differently so you can't make sure that everyone who opens your library will have the same experience. So inside the folder, I'm going to add the folder for samples. And this is not supposed to be like an in-depth tutorial. If you want that, you should go to David's tutorial. I know that this is a D3. So D3 would be 62. This is really easy because I'm only using one sample. So root note is 62. It's going to go from 12 to 108 and the path. It's gonna be the folder called samples, name of the file. And that already should work. I'm gonna drag the DS preset file. There we go. <laughs> it already works. As you can see, it's not that difficult. Now I wanna take a minute to thank our sponsor. Just kidding. <laughs> Back to the video. Now I'm just going to take a few photos of the amp for the graphic interface, but I'm going to need this, so I hope this doesn't look too bad. I'm struggling a little bit with my microphone cable. All right. <laughs> so do you guys want my socks to be in the picture? Is that gonna inspire you while you're using it? Probably not. I mean, people like feet. Do people like socks as well? Oh no, you can see my reflection. That should be enough. <laughs> so now I'm gonna make the graphic interface. I'm gonna paste the photo inside the same folder. I'm gonna copy the name of the file and here where it says image background, I'm gonna change the name to, I'm also gonna include the name of the folder. And if I save this and then I reload the instrument, we have the photo already. How cool is that? Now I'm gonna change the placement of the knobs. That can be a little bit of a pain in the ass because you have to do this. Let's say I want to move it on the Y axis. Let's say negative 500. We're gonna reload and now it's, now I have no clue where it is. What about 20? There it is. <laughs> so that's probably the most annoying part. Now, I don't know how much of a pain in the ass it is to make a graphic interface for a contact instrument, but the fact that you can use a free piece of software to create a sample library with your own graphic interface that looks good and then share it with the world, I think that's pretty special. But my favorite part about this is that you can open other sample instruments and look at how they were made. For example, right now by default, I only have tone and reverb. I want a volume knob. So I could go through the website and look up how to make a volume knob, or you can download something like this. This is a really cool synthesizer. As you can see, it has a volume knob and we can open it as a notepad. And here we can look at all of, oh my God, those are so many samples. I'm gonna look for the volume knob. Here it is, label volume. So I'm gonna copy this and I guess it would be here. I'm gonna save this. I'm gonna open it again and there we go. Now I have a volume knob. <laughs> Hi, this is Adrian from the future. I'm editing this video. My audio recorder ran out of battery. Yeah, which I'm really happy about because I said some horrible stuff while shooting this video, like some career ending stuff. Uh, this is the part where I realized I wasn't getting any audio, <laughs> idiot. And here's the final result.
this is what it looks like. I ended up copying the attack and the release knobs from that other sample instrument. I just changed the positioning so it looks nicer. And now just like that, I have a sample instrument that I can share with anyone. Here is my text file. I'm gonna drag it and there it is. <laughs> There has never been a better time to be a musician than right now. I mean, I might be wrong because I haven't lived in all of the times. <laughs> all I know is that we have so many tools available to us and they keep getting more accessible. This sampler is not a replacement for contact. And it's also not a sampler that you can just open, drag a sample into it, and automatically you can play it on your piano, if life were only that simple. But it's not trying to do either of those things. If you want to download a free plugin that is well-designed and easy to use, and that will allow you to use hundreds, if not thousands, of free, unique sample libraries, I think you should definitely try it. Or if you're looking for an inexpensive way to create sample libraries and maybe share them with others, you should also check it out. I know it looks scary, but if I could do it, anyone can. <laughs> I think there's a lot of future here. I believe this is the beginning of a really cool community of musicians. Click the link in the description to download my free sample library for free. <laughs> Click the link in the description if you want to download the sample library that I made in this video for free. I hope you'll get some use out of it. It's my first sample instrument, so please be nice. <laughs> oh my god, it's night time pretty much. <laughs> if you like this video, please give it a like and consider subscribing. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.